Good morning. Welcome to Chapel. Tim Swenson here, and I come to you today from the headquarters of the Institute of Lutheran Theology, Brooking, South Dakota. I come to you with the Psalm 146 for the third Sunday in this season of Advent. As we begin today, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, you once called John the Baptist to give witness to the coming of your Son and to prepare his way. Grant to us, your people, ears to hear your will for us delivered in Jesus Christ. Through that hearing, grant us such eyes of faith that we too may give witness to what we see in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 146 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On to that very day his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Greetings to you. Greetings on this day that the Lord has made. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from his Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed be he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. The psalmist begins with praise. Hallelujah! Why should the psalmist praise? The psalmist praises because he has a Lord who keeps faith forever. Even the most steadfast of mortals will fail your trust because they die. Their breath departs. They return to the dust. Can you hear the proclamation of Genesis 3.19? For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Have you heard its echoes in Psalm 104? When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. Have you heard it in Isaiah 40? All flesh is grass, the grass withers and the flower fades, and the breath of the Lord blows on it. And when Peter carries forth Isaiah's preaching, all flesh is grass forward in time and preaches it to the church. Human mortality unflinchingly exposes human untrustworthiness. Who needs a Savior who can't save himself? As the jeers and scoffs from the foot of the cross demonstrated, let him save himself. There were days in my childhood when I could hardly wait for my father to return from working in the field. He would leave the house well before I awakened and return at the end of the day, 
having tilled the soil for twelve, fourteen, sometimes sixteen hours straight. When he returned from the field, the dust covered him, darkening his skin and penetrating his clothing. He would scoop me into his arms, lift me high and pull me close. I'd bury my face in the hollow of his neck, rubbing against his whiskers and breathing in the scent of dust so strong and pungent I could taste the soil. I grew in years, and it was my turn to take to the field from early daylight until the end of day. I, too, came to till the soil for twelve, fourteen, sometimes sixteen hours straight. I, too, came to be dust-covered, with dust-darkened skin and dust-penetrated clothes. In those days of dust it rose from the soil, settled like a cloud around me on the tractor, enveloping me as if in an embrace, working its way into my eyes and blinding me to all but my immediate surroundings. When dust gets in your eyes, you can't see much but what's close at hand. So it is with the dust of your mortality. It gets in your eyes and you can't see much but what's close at hand. The dust of your mortality keeps you from seeing the Lord's reign. It keeps you from seeing the rule of your God who has chosen you and promised to be yours. Why should you be any different than John the Baptist imprisoned awaiting death? The dust of John's mortality was being stirred up, blinding him. He could no longer see. Even his eyes of faith had given way to the blinding dust. So he sent for help. He needed a preacher with some good news. So he sent his disciples to Jesus and Oh, what good news they received. Jesus knew John needed a preacher, so he said to them, Go and tell John. It was the news John needed to hear. His hope in the Lord would be restored. He received the blessing named by the psalmist, The one who hopes in the Lord is truly blessed. Unlike mortal humans with their temporary plans and schemes. The Lord will reign forever. There would be no blessing, though, in, an, in the everlasting rule of a tyrant. So here the psalmist breaks into a near lyrical voice and giving descriptions of the Lord's reign, creating, faithful, just, feeding, freeing, healing, justifying, compassionate. Who would not be blessed by the reign of such a king? Such blessing is not automatic. In fact, the Israelites knew it only as prophecy, only as the promise of an anticipated future, only as possible when Messiah would come, only when the true Lord, the righteous King, would be revealed. They could live in such hopeful expectation because they had a faithful Lord. Now to you, this faithful Lord has come with his kingdom. He has come, and when asked if he was the one, whether he was the one they had waited for in hopeful expectation, that one who would be a faithful Lord, when asked if he was the one, Jesus witnessed to the actuality of this prophecy, prophecy being fulfilled. Jesus Christ is the one Son of Man in whom there is salvation. 
Jesus Christ is the Lord who came preaching. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is preached close at hand for you. For you who have dust in your eyes, the dust of your mortality. Like John, you have been imprisoned by one more powerful than you. That triumvirate of evil, the devil, the world, and your sinful self are stirring up your mortal dust, blinding you to the Lord's reign. So Jesus comes. Jesus comes bringing the kingdom, bringing the kingdom close at hand for you who have dust in your eyes. Like John, you need a preacher one who will declare to you the reality of this kingdom, one who will declare to you the reality of the Lord who reigns in it, who will declare to you the reality of its presence. So your preacher is sent to you, one whom you have called. Your preacher gives witness of this Lord to you, echoing his message, the kingdom is here, repent and believe. Jesus Christ, the Lord who sets the prisoners free. Jesus Christ, the Lord who opens the eyes of the blind. Jesus Christ, the Lord who lifts up the bowed down. Jesus Christ, the Lord who keeps faith forever. Jesus Christ, the Lord who in your blind mortality you betray and crucify. Jesus Christ, the Lord whom you killed, God raised from the dead, so that he would come now to you, come now to you in this preached word, come now to you in this word, I forgive you. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, I forgive you all your sins. As this preached Lord comes to you in the means of grace, you who were once blinded by your mortality, eyes full of dust, you receive the eyes of faith and enjoy the forever reign of your Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, during these days when dust gets in our eyes, use the washing of regeneration. Use the waters of baptism in our return to them to wash the dust from our eyes so that with the eyes of faith we may see the kingdom all around us. Father in heaven, while we are secure in faith, held in the kingdom that is present but not yet manifest, hold from us all the perils that are present in patience and waiting. Heavenly Father, during this time of waiting, set our hands to useful tasks that we might be some good to our neighbors, that we might be of some use in the building up and the maintenance of this world as it waits for the world to come. Heavenly Father, to all those who prepare for the Nativity Day, Grant that they may hear your word, have the dust washed from their eyes, and see past their mortality to the faithful reign of Christ their Lord. Heavenly Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Lord has set you free. Thanks be to God. Amen.